are doing an extended interview with Ben Feinstein from SecureWorks. Yes, uh, why don't you tell us um, some of the things you might not be aware of, as, right. as your, even as a power user, you might not okay. be aware of. Um, well, one, one uh, trend we're really seeing is targeting the client side. And what I mean by that is, you know, traditionally in security, um, people have been concerned about protecting their servers. Right. Email servers, database servers, all this. And um, as the world of IT and information security is doing a better job protecting those assets, the attackers have moved to easier targets. And one of the easier targets is the client, being right. the browser, the flash plugins, the Java um, runtime, mm -hmm. things that are running on your desktop. Um, so basically, you know, this, this can be anything from um, you know, social networking sites that have uh, user-produced content on there, malicious flash movies. Um, another major threat we're seeing is um, bad guys using ad syndication to basically push out exploits and push out malicious um, advertisements through these ad syndication networks. And it can be difficult to track this down, and it's very difficult for the people that buy and sell these ads to vet every single um, ad run that goes out through there. So we've seen basically people spend a little bit of money, and a lot of times they're using stolen credit cards or stolen identities to buy these page impressions, right. and then pushing out a malicious ad that might install a backdoor on your system or download other pieces of malware. Um, and this ad is you know, part of a site that you would typically trust. It could be a news site, a media site. Um, you know, many, many sites have syndicated advertisements, banners. Sure, that's sort, right. of, sort of, yeah, that's right. the way that the internet right. makes and its that's money. That's a lot of way yeah. people support you know, their sites is to do that. Right. Um, another major trend we're seeing is um, manipulated search results. Yeah. And um, so basically some bad guys have figured out some ways to manipulate the algorithms that the major search engines are using to generate those search results and the page ranks. And so um, for common search terms or even not so common search terms, the attackers can manipulate these results and get in the first you know, one, two, or three, or five results links that go to uh, websites that are going to exploit your browser, install right. malware, download more, more malicious stuff. So typically, you, know, you can even go online and search for you know, wool socks. And that first result from the search engine might actually be a link to a site that's going to install a Trojan horse on your machine. Um, wow. And we've been working with the search engine vendors, and they're they're no being wool socks. no wool socks, no wool yeah. socks anymore, no wool socks the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're uh, they're aware of the threat, and they're being responsive, and they're uh, trying to clean it up. But it's really you know like most things, it's a kind of an arms race. Right. As they change the algorithms they're using, and they change the the uh, controls they put in place, the bad guys are figuring out ways to get around. If it. I'm a super paranoid user, which after listening to you talk for a few minutes, I'm becoming a super <laughs> paranoid user. If I'm a super <laughs> paranoid user, and say I use Firefox, Firefox mm -hmm. is becoming a really popular browser, very popular with right. power user sets. Our readers on Download Squad right. love, mm -hmm. love some Firefox. Um, what can I do? Like, are there things that I can do yeah. specifically that you know don't come the default configuration that would help me stay a little safer? Because I mean, you mm -hmm. can never be totally safe, I guess. But um, well, in Firefox, there's one particular plugin or add-on that I really like, and it's uh, called NoScript. Okay. Um, and uh, it's it's a add-on that uh, manages JavaScript, Java, Flash, and, like basically dynamic content that's getting on these websites, and. Um, in addition to basically disallowing that to run, and you can whitelist certain sites. So if your bank, for instance, requires JavaScript to function properly, you can say, okay, allow you know, bank.com. Um, but it does other things. It checks for some common cross-site scripting attacks, um, cross-site request forgeries, and, and other malicious things out there. So it's really a good idea when you install your Firefox, go ahead and pull down this uh, NoScript okay. um, plugin. Uh, also, it can also block Flash, um, Flash plugins, and you can obviously, you know, allow that Flash movie to play, so it's going to break YouTube. But I thought Flash. Yeah. I mean, correct me, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Obviously, I am wrong, but I thought Flash was a fairly safe thing to be running. I mean, that's um, everybody does, you know. Right, and well, actually, um, Flash is becoming more and more complicated, and they're adding more and more features to it. Mm -hmm. So the latest version of Flash essentially has a uh, network socket API inside of it. Right. So um, some some attacks that that people are writing about are basically um, using network sockets inside the Flash player to do things like scan your network, in, your internal network from your browser, or send stolen data to other websites. Um, and so this plays in with the uh, same origin policy that Flash and the browser tries to uh, enforce. But if you're really interested, you know, start Googling around about um, uh, DNS binding and anti-pinning, anti, anti -pinning, um, DNS rebinding, I, I should say. 
DNS anti-pinning. It's ways to use Flash or Java plugins or even just the browser itself to kind of violate that same origin policy. And that the same origin is basically that if content comes from, you know, example.com, it should only ever be able to talk back to it. To go back to that site. Right. And yeah, you would think that would keep you somewhat right. safe, but you're saying... Well, the problem really is doesn't. that Flash keeps its own pen, DNS pending database, and the browser keeps its own, okay. and Java keeps its own. So you can use, if you, if you understand how the interactions work, you can basically work around that same origin policy. And um, make it think it's, right. make it think it's going to the right, right site. Right, so it's just um, another way to, you know, uh, leverage the client to scan and attack. You know, people are doing pen tests where they are using a client's browser to attack and compromise machines on the local area network. They haven't had to break through a firewall. They haven't had to compromise, you know, the network itself. They basically you basically um, open the door and let them inside. And socially say, engineered. On in. They socially engineered someone to visit their page, and while that flash movie is loaded on that page, they've got control of your browser. Wow. Scary um, yet? How, I mean, how can I stay safe? It sounds like it's really a very scary world, not to like right. be hyperbolic or anything. It really seriously sounds like a very scary world these days online. Um, and in ways that I, before we started talking, mm -hmm. I really wasn't, I'd never thought of. And now I'm going to be suspicious everywhere I go, right. every ad I load and every, <laughs> everything. What can I do to feel like I'm somewhat safe? Um, can I do anything? You could use, uh, when you're browsing, like doing your social networking sites and you look on Craigslist and this and that, you could use um, users with less privileges. Okay. Um, and XP, and Windows XP has, you know, administrator and limited users. Vista has taken that to the next step. And with user access controls, um, they really have, like, uh, different levels of privileges. So you could have create a user on your Vista box that has the minimum amount of privileges, and you use that to browse to the shadier areas of the internet. Okay. Um, or, you know, you can take it to the next level, use, you know, buy a separate machine. Use virtual machines. Okay. So you could, you know, uh, VMware gives away VMware server for free. Mm -hmm. You could download that, create, you know, Windows XP uh, virtual machine, and you could even, you know, once you browse for the day, throw it away and start from, That's you know, the idea. snapshot that you were at. Um, so some solutions like that, they're definitely unwieldy. They can be unwieldy and time consuming and not as convenient, but. Um, it's going to be safer. It should be safe. Now there's uh, a lot of attacks involving fake or malicious codecs. And yeah. so typically really? these are um, surrounding pornography websites. You mm -hmm. visit the site, it says, oh, you want to see the porn, you got to download this codec. Right. Right. And what it is, it's really a, a Trojan downloader or backdoor, a Trojan horse, whatever. And so it, it's another social engineering attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when someone's trying to get to their porn, they may not be in the... Uh, it's not even thinking it right. They're not thinking it's security. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I mentioned in the, uh, the shorter interview also talking about uh, rogue antivirus and rogue anti-malware programs. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you might visit a site that will pop up a window and say, we've detected that right. you are infected with you know, Trojan Fubar and now you need, you need to download this yeah, and we'll fix it for you. And those are, those are you, bad you, news. You, exactly. And, and sometimes they look really realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I've seen some on, like on my Mac, which are clearly mock-ups of what a Windows scan would look like. So right. it's, if you're on a different operating system, you know that it's fake. But they've made the window look so realistic, and they've done the animation so well that a less knowledgeable user, like my mom, for instance, mm -hmm. might look at it and have the idea, oh, this okay. looks like a legitimate program is coming up and mm -hmm. scanning my system, not knowing that it's just either a flash image or, or a GIF file or something else, and really just trying to be a way to get you to install that malware right. system. And in the past, you know, people would say, oh, if the site doesn't look right, if it looks unprofessional or hacked together, beware. But these bad guys are putting up very slick sites. You know, the graphics look great. They look like they're designed by a professional, you know, graphics designer and all this stuff. So really, you can't say that, um, that just because the site looks well put together and professional that it's legitimate that's anymore. Safe. Wow. Yeah. That's... Uh... That's some scary stuff. So, well, thanks, Ben, for talking to us. Thanks, for thanks yeah. to SecureWorks for sending you over. Thank you, SecureWorks.